Hey, welcome back to the lecture. In this lecture, let's understand Atmega C28P microcontroller's timer peripheral because we will be using the timer ISR to track the time in our application. Before that, we already have these variables or these attributes in our main structure and uh, in this application this current time variable stores the time in number of 100 milliseconds that means this variable will be incremented for every 100 milliseconds by the timer isr for example if current time is equal to 1 that means 100 milliseconds has been elapsed then the display would show something like this R0, minute 0, second 0, the subsecond field will show 1, which signifies 100 milliseconds. For example, current time, if it is equal to 9, that means 900 milliseconds. That is 9 into 100 milliseconds. That is 900 milliseconds. Then the display would show something like this. If current time is equal to 10, that means 10 into 100 milliseconds. That means 1 second. Then subsecond field will show 0 and second field will show 1. So if the current time is equal to 605, that means 60 into 5 seconds. 60 seconds means 1 minute. That's why the minute field will show 1 and 0.5 seconds means 500 milliseconds. That's why the subsecond field will show 5 like that. And please note that this variable holds the time in 24 hour format. That means this variable will hold the time from 0 to 24 hour. 24 hour means 24 into, you have to convert that into seconds, that is 3600, you have to multiply it by 3600, that is 1 hour contains 3600 seconds and multiply it by 10 to convert that into number of 100 milliseconds. This is the minimum value and this is the maximum value. When this value is equal to this value, then the current time rolls back to zero again. And alarm time, this stores the time in number of seconds because we manipulate the alarm time in terms of hours, minutes, and seconds. So we don't care about the subsecond field. That's why it just stores the time in number of seconds, and this variable holds the time in 24 hour format. And temporary time variable stores the time in number of seconds because we don't edit or we don't set the subsecond field. We only uh, modify our minutes and seconds. That's why this also stores the time in number of seconds. So depending on the value of the time mode variable, this variable may hold time in 24 hour format or 12 hour format. We'll see while coding how to use these variables. This is just for information. And basically if you see these two variables, they hold the time in 24 hour format. When you hold the time in 24 hour format, then you need not to use one more variable to hold the time format like AM or PM because by decoding the 24 hour format, we can come to know whether it is AM or PM. So that is one advantage of storing the time in 24 hour format. Now let's explore the timer peripheral. So the Atmega 328P has three timer and counter peripherals timer counter 0, timer counter 1, and timer counter 2. The timer counter 0 peripheral is already used by the MILIS functionality of the Arduino framework. Let's open the data sheet of the Atpega 328P microcontroller to know more about the timer peripherals. Now here I am in the data sheet of Atmega 328P and here you can see that it has got three timer and counter peripherals. One is 8 bit timer counter 0, another one is 16 bit timer counter 1, and another timer peripheral is 8 bit timer counter 2. So the timer counter 0 and timer counter 2 are 8 bit timers, and the timer counter 1 peripheral is 16 bit timer. 8 bit timer counter 0 peripheral is already used by the Arduino framework to implement the MILIS functionality. The MILIS variable is updated using the overflow interrupt of the 8-bit timer counter 0 peripheral. So we will not be using that peripheral. 
will use 16-bit timer counter one peripheral. Here you can see the block diagram of the 16-bit timer and here the important thing what we should notice is this field. So this is a place where counting takes place and this is driven by the counter clock. This is a counter clock or timer clock and uh, this is again derived from this clock selection engine so you can supply a special clock to tick the timer you know you can provide the clock via the external pin of the microcontroller so we'll not be using this method what we'll use is we'll use the main system clock of the microcontroller and uh, we can slow down that clock using this prescaler Basically, we will use the clock through this way. You can use the prescalar to slow down the clock to increase or decrease the timer resolution. We will explore more on that later. And this timer also has got two compare registers. We will be using uh, these compare registers. So, whenever the counter's value matches with a compare register value, then there will be a compare interrupt. For example, let's say you have stored some value 200 here and you start this timer. When the value of this T count register reaches to 200, then this comparator uh, detects a match. When the match is detected, interrupt can be generated. You can see that here. That is a compare interrupt. And we will catch this interrupt in our application to increment this variable value. You can explore more on that in this section in the data sheet, output compare units, and you can see that it is clearly written here. The 16 bit comparator continuously compares, this is a comparator, compares T count 1 with the output compare register, that is output compare register A or B. If T count equals OCR1 register, the comparator signals a match. A match will set the output compare flag at the next timer clock cycle. If enabled, the output compare flag generates an output compare interrupt. Basically, we have to implement the ISR for output compare interrupt. You can work with this timer in different modes. Explore this section to understand various modes of operation. So let's get back to the data sheet. Let's go to 15.9 modes of operation you can drive this timer in normal mode please read here so you'll understand what exactly is a normal mode there are various modes actually we'll be driving this uh, timer in ctc mode that means clear timer on compare match this is how our timer behaves if you use the timer in ctc mode and this mode can also be used to generate the waveform on some selected pins but we'll not be using that functionality because we don't want that here you can see that what does this mean ctc mode here they have clearly written in ctc mode the counter that is t count register value is clear to zero automatically when the counter value t count one matches either the ocr one a or icr1 register so the waveform looks something like this let's say the t count register starts with zero for every timer clock cycle the t count register value is increased like this when it reaches the value of output compare register here the t count value is automatically cleared and interrupt will be generated like that here you can vary that output compare register value to generate some waves on the output pin so we don't need this we will not modify the output compare register value now let's talk about this clock which is also called as timer counter clock this is a clock which is fed to this engine please note that in arduino uno the Atmega 328P microcontroller is clocked by external 16 MHz resonator. On the board, there is a resonator that is of 16 MHz. 
So that is used as a main clock, main system clock for this microcontroller's operation. That's why we will consider F clock underscore IO is equal to 16 megahertz. This is a terminology what is being used in the data sheet of this microcontroller. You can consider it as frequency of the main clock that is 16 megahertz. So that is represented by the term clock underscore IO. Timer count clock that can be derived from this main clock. So you can divide this clock by using a prescalar value. Initially, by default, the prescalar value will be 1. That's why there is no division. This is equal to this one. How to control that prescalar? There is a register called TCCR1B. That is a control register. And you can see that by using these fields, you can control the prescaling. You can divide the clock by 8, 64, 256, or 1024. So we will use the prescala of 256 for this application. So then what happens to our timer count clock? This one. This is equal to the main clock that is 16 megahertz divided by 256. That means the timer count clock will become 62.5 kilohertz. So the timer count clock looks something like this with a time period of 16 microseconds. That means the count will happen for every 16 microseconds. Now we have to calculate the output compare match value. What's the value we are going to keep in the output compare register? As per our prescalar, the prescalar is set to 256, the tick resolution becomes 16 microseconds. So for every 16 microseconds, the counter ticks. That means to tick once, it needs 16 microseconds. Then to generate the time base of let's say 100 milliseconds, how many ticks are required? If you just calculate with a simple mathematics, we will arrive at this value that is 6250. So that's why you have to consider this value minus 1 as output compare match value, and you have to keep this value in the output compare register. And if you are wondering why this needs to be minus 1, because for the simple reason, the counter starts from zero. Now, let's say you want interrupt for every 32 microseconds, or you want time based generation for every 32 microseconds. 32 microseconds divided by the resolution that is 16 microseconds will give you the value 2. If you just store 2 in the output compare registers, let's say this is the output compare register, and you store the value 2 here, then that would be wrong because see here. And let's say this is a timer count clock. And this is, let's say, T count register. When you start the timer, initially, this is the first clock cycle. This is the second clock cycle. This is third. When you start the timer initially here, what happens? The T count register value will be zero. And for the second clock cycle, it becomes 1. The change to this register happens here. And in the next clock cycle, it becomes 2. The change will happen here. It becomes 2 here. And when that happens, here the compare interrupt will be generated. 2 equal to 2. Compare interrupt will be generated here. But what is the elapsed time? 16 plus 16 plus 16. That is 48 microseconds, but you wanted it for 32 microseconds. That's why you have to store minus 1 here. When you do that, the compare interrupt will be generated here. Because here it has written, you can see here, a match will set the output compare flag at the next timer clock cycle. So here, 1 became 2 here, but the match will be reported at the next clock cycle. And in the software, we have to define the timer one compare ISR. You define that ISR in the clock alarm underscore sm.cpp. You just have to use the ISR macro and the vector address. The vector address is this one timer one underscore compare a underscore vect. You have to write exactly like this.
I just added a function timer on underscore setup. Here we will configure the timer one peripheral of the microcontroller to generate interrupt for every 100 milliseconds. As I explained in the previous lecture, I will be configuring the timer one peripheral in CTC mode. Now to configure the timer in CTC mode, you have to explore the register description. Let's go to the register description. First, let's start with the first register of the timer one peripheral that is TCCR1A, that is a control register A. Here you can see that these are the bits we need not to use because, you know, for example, here let's start with the 0th field. Let's start from here. You can see that the bit 0 and 1, which stands for waveform generation mode, WGM, and this can be used to choose the mode. I am going to keep these bits to represent the CTC mode. For that, these two bits must be zero. You can see here. And WGM12 bit must be one. And 13 must be zero. Here you will get 10 and 11. 12 and 13 you get in the next register. So we'll see that. As for that table, it is confirmed that we have to keep these two bit fields as zero. Now let's see 4, 5, 6, 7. 4 and 5, here it is. Compare output mode for channel B. Actually, these bits are not required because these are used to control the OC1A and OC1B pins. I want it to be disconnected, so that's why we will select 0 here. So we'll select 0 for these 4 bit fields because that is something to do with the wave generation that's why it turns out to be zero so that's why what i just do is i just copy this uh, register name and uh, go to your main.cpp paste here and make that as zero now let's go to the next register the next register is tccr1b here you can configure the prescale art and also you should configure wgm12 and wgm13 fields here you can see that WGM12 must be 1. So 12 must be 1. This you keep as 0. And this is something to do with input capture. So we are not using input capture. Let's keep these two bit fields as 0. And after that, this is for clock selection, CS. Let's see, clock selection bits. By default, it will be 0. When it is 0, the timer is disabled or timer counter is stopped. If you want to stop the counter, then you have to make these bit fields as zero. And you can also use these bit fields to select the prescala values. So I will we'll go with 256. That means the main clock we are going to divide. That is the main clock is clock IO. That one we are going to divide by 256. So we are slowing it down. So CS12 has to be one here. So you just do that. Just copy this register name and i'm just making those two bits as one here that's it i'm just storing the value in binary and after that we have to enable the interrupt for the compare event that you can do in this register let's go to the register timer counter interrupt mask register and we'll be using output compare register a you have to enable this bit IE, IE means interrupt enable. Output compare, interrupt enable for register A. You just have to make this bit as 1. I do that here. And after that, keep the value in OCR1A register. This is the output compare register A. That's it. And after that, go to the state machine.cpp, that is sm.cpp. And here we must uh, implement the ISR. For that, use the ISR macro here. And you have to give the vector address here. And that you can take from here. Go to interrupts and interrupt vectors in this microcontroller. And ours is timer compare A. Just select this. And let's go to the code. And here just paste that. So just write timer1 underscore compare a underscore vect that's it 